Over a thousand miles southwest into rural China, this feels like a different country. I've come to the foothills of the Karst Mountains, popular with the Chinese themselves, especially at this time of year, when the Moon Festival attracts people from all over the country. Well, I'm getting close to Yang Shuo now, which is where I'm going to be taking my crash Tai Chi course. The landscape is spectacular, and the closest I've got to rural China in my lifetime is uh, watching the film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which is no doubt a million miles from the reality of modern China. But here in the countryside, you do get a sense of the old meeting the new. Yang Shuo is a bustling and, by Chinese standards, cosmopolitan town. Over the past 10 years, it's become a popular destination for Western travelers, many of whom come to practice martial arts. I'm heading to Yang Shuo Park to meet my instructor, Mei, who I'm told practices here every day. It's inspiring to see the older generation out in force here. It's hard to know when Tai Chi first emerged, but it is known to have originated from just one family, the Chen family. And in 1996, May's passion led her to Chen village to practice with the 19th generation Chen master. Do you feel the benefit of Tai Chi throughout your life or only when you are practicing? Anytime, when you're standing shopping, you just sing down and then you feel it. When you're cooking, you're standing, sing down, and then you're doing it, you feel it. So in, in the whole life, any time, you can feel it. And what, what does this energy feel like? Um, different people have a different feeling. Some is like warm, like electric. Yes. Some like cool. So different people have a different feeling. And what does it feel like for you? Uh, for, for me, it feels like electric. Like electric? Yeah. I can show you something. Relax. Yeah, that's it. See? Now you feel. Yeah, feel it? Yes. Yeah. And this is a feeling that you live with yeah. all your life. Yeah. Tai Chi is really traditional culture of China. So you feel in tune with Chinese I am. culture? I am. I am. <laughs> I like it. I like Mei, and her passion for Tai Chi is clear. And whilst being totally alien to Western thinking, this idea of cultivating qi, or life energy, does make perfect sense. I wonder if I'll find mine. It's pretty inspiring to have seen so many people practicing Tai Chi in one place. And it kind of confirms to me that yes, Tai Chi is part of everyday life here in China. It also tells me Yangshu is a great place to learn the practice and to soak up some Chinese culture at the same time. OK, so off to my first Tai Chi class with May and travelling by bicycle, which seems the perfect way to see the rural countryside. This is my rather lovely hotel in the village of Zhoxian, which kind of means Joe's town, which is rather apt. But if we're going to be precise, it means old town, because the word Joe means old. Less said about that, the better. The cast mountain scenery here is utterly spectacular. These dominant limestone peaks have a kind of surreal quality and provide the perfect backdrop for my Tai Chi experience. May's Tai Chi school is three miles away, near the Yulong River. My fellow students are a cosmopolitan bunch, hailing from all over the world, but united in their quest for Qi-inspired well-being. So I think by studying Tai Chi, I get a, a more deeper understanding of Chinese uh, cultural heritage. And I have a really busy life with a lot of stress, and I rush from appointment to appointment. So for me, Tai Chi, it keeps me in balance. It makes me calm. 
Um, I'm a quite a nervous person. <laughs> Some Chinese people that I've sp uh, been speaking to, they uh, really think of it as a thing that uh, old people do, but it's also becoming really popular for young Chinese people to do the more uh, advanced form of Tai Chi. I think uh, Mei is a fantastic uh, Tai Chi master. I would really like to learn from her. Good morning, everyone. So now, welcome to our school, Long Tou San Tai Chi Chuan Xue Xiao. Our school most practice just for to uh, improve our health. And today we're doing Yang Style 24. After a few days, you can pick up the whole form. But you need to go in detail. You take some time to feeling and to, to find out the balance. And then Tai Chi also kind of like movement meditation. Yeah, so really relaxing your mind. You don't need to think in your movement. I should tell you, relax all the time. Okay, so it should help your mind to relax. Well, we certainly all look the part. Now we just need to master the art form. We are novices. So uh, obviously it would be arrogant to think that any of us are able to master Tai Chi in a week. But if there's any way you can master it or even Come close to it, it's here. Then back step. May tells us Yang 24 is an accessible form for beginners. It derives from the Yang style and comprises of 24 movements. Important thing for beginner is uh, doing a lot of basic step. If your step is not stable and affect the whole movement, it doesn't coordinate. Going. So when you just beginning to practice, you still have thinking the movement, how to do it next and next. So your body cannot relax enough, then that time you can't feel it. But when you keep practice until you don't need to think in your movement, then your body already know the movement, then you can feel it, your energy flowing around your body. Tai Chi is considered a martial art of sorts, but whilst there's no sign of fighting in this practice, each move can be traced back to a form of self-defense. In fact, the name Tai Chi itself means supreme ultimate fist. Feel it? Yeah. Feel this part like slowly, but you're going like, like twisting and, and going. You give a little bit of power and then down. That way. <laughs> I protect you. Yeah, she's so small and she's so strong. <laughs> After a morning of Tai Chi, I am starving. As with most other well-being disciplines, diet is holistically linked to Tai Chi. The Chinese have definite preferences when it comes to food. Temperature and climate both come into play. So even though you live in a very hot climate, you choose to eat hot food? Yeah, we always eat hot food in China. Every meal, and also, see, everything is cooked. That's a Chinese culture. Like uh, you, you, you love in the US, they like a salad. But here, the local people, you would let them like everyday cold food in their body. They feel like sick. They feel oh, ma a lot of yin, not a yang, not, not enough balance. <laughs> It's interesting to hear May talk about the yin-yang properties of food. Of course, we all know food gives us energy. But here in China, that energy plays a much more integral role. What a wonderful place to practice Tai Chi. In Chi. Your body like free, like the bamboo on the wind. Just follow the wind to, to moving, flowing. And then down, 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 sink down. Important is that our chi, we just talking about yin yang chi. Now we use yin yang chi flowing up our arm. So you must be really relaxed. That's why we say no bones. No muscle. You have forgot your bone, forgot your muscle, just like the legs. So just yin and yang come together and fill up your whole body. And in your dantian, yang become yin, yin become yang. 
to make really balance. And this flows through throughout life. This yin yang balance. Right, it's our throughout everything in your life. Right. So, so that the energy is our life energy in our body. So everyone need that energy. Otherwise, you no power. That's the end of my first day, and if truth be told, I'm kind of overcome by the whole experience. It's very seldom that you arrive in a place that you've heard so much about, and it is better than you ever imagined. This is more picture postcard than the picture postcard. And there's one thing learning Tai Chi from a DVD, there's another learning Tai Chi in a, in a studio somewhere. But to practice in a location like this is, is more than you ever imagine you're going to do in your life. And uh, one of the students put it very, very well, which was she said she felt like she'd been popped into the middle of a film set. And uh, I can see what she means. It's actually harder than it looks because uh, it looks it, because it's slowly. It looks easy, but it's not. Uh, there are a few moments in the routines we've been doing where I could feel it all start to come together, and the chi and the energy that May was explaining to us, I could feel that start to flow around my body. Uh, as May told us, like you have to really uh, get the moves uh, into your body and then you don't focus on the moves anymore, you focus on your attitude and your chi, like the energy. There's an extraordinarily natural feel to all this. And when May's course is over, there's only one thing to do. Go for a swim in the River Lee. It's no secret that I love wild swimming and I've had my eye on this river as a destination for a few days. It's very hot, it's the end of our course and this is the perfect place to be. Tai Chi, much like yoga, meditation and countless other practices, teaches you to be in the moment. And this is quite literally the perfect moment. However, it seems our host's idea of well-being doesn't extend to getting their feet wet. Well, I think I've made a fair amount of progress here, as have the rest of the people on my course. Which goes to show that it is possible to learn the basics of Tai Chi fairly quickly. We're able to perform 24 moves, we're able to feel this kind of collective energy between ourselves to relax our bodies and so on and so forth. But personally, I haven't got an incredible feeling of my own Chi. And that's the lesson to learn here. Tai Chi is an ancient practice and takes an incredibly long time to master. It's a lesson in patience, something that us hurried Westerners could do with learning. <laughs> 